that PRC hackers are targeting our critical infrastructure, our water treatment plants, our electrical grid, our oil and natural gas pipelines, our transportation systems. China's hackers are positioning on American infrastructure in preparation to wreak havoc and cause real-world harm to American citizens and communities if and when China decides the time has come to strike. In a rapidly evolving technological landscape, a new arms race has sparked in the shadows between the world's two superpowers. It's not a competition over traditional resources like land or oil, which we've seen before, but over a resource both seemingly unassuming and immensely powerful, compute power. And the weapon? Quantum computing. Quantum computers use the natural world to produce machines with staggeringly powerful processing potential. I think it's going to be the most important computing technology of this century, which we are really just about one-fifth into. This new weapon has the potential of stealthily bringing war to our very own doorsteps, disrupting our access to clean water, electricity, and everything we currently take for granted. This race comes at a time of rising geopolitical tensions, especially between the current global order, the US, and a country vying for a new world order, China. The players on this geopolitical chessboard also include a little island off the coast of China called Taiwan. Our world has become dependent on this island for every single piece of technology that we use. Because of this, the US and its allies are gearing up for war in the Taiwan Strait, sending aircraft carriers and troops to show military dominance. China is also ramping up its military training and invasion simulations of Taiwan. These events are a stark indication of the preparations for conflict. Both sides spin narratives of democracy or unity. The US advocating for freedom and China clinging to this historical rhetoric of unification under the One China policy. Yet, beneath these ideological claims lies a stark reality a desire to control the technological supply chain the world runs on. The significance of semiconductors and Taiwan's pivotal role in manufacturing them is widely recognized. One company makes 24% of all the world's chips and more than 90% of the most advanced ones, the smallest, fastest chips used in today's iPhones, supercomputers, and automotive AI. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, is not a household name but it's quietly making chips for every new iPhone, U.S. fighter jets, the highest-end processors, you name it. However, less apparent is the shadowy arms race brewing behind the scenes, an arms race comparable to the Manhattan Project, but this time to create the world's most powerful computer. And this race has already begun in what is being called the Artificial Intelligence Cold War. But how did we find ourselves here, in the midst of a new Cold War and at the starting line of an arms race for a technology with impacts beyond our current imagination? This is more than a story of ambition and power. It's about the relentless pursuit of technological supremacy and the implication of the quantum revolution. States has shot down the Chinese balloon that's been flying high over the U.S. for the last several days, creating a diplomatic and political storm. How did the U.S. and China actually get here in a new Cold War and at the starting gates of an arms race? This story dates back to the aftermath of World War II. China and the U.S. emerged from the rubble, charting very divergent paths that would eventually converge in a complex dance for global rivalry. The United States, empowered by victory, rose from the ashes, asserting its technological and military might with the haunting echoes of Hiroshima. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima, 
and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. With this bomb, we have now added a new and revolutionary increase in destruction to supplement the growing power of our armed forces. This act signaled the end of one arms race and the beginning of an American dominance. America redefined the global order. It spearheaded a surge in globalization and innovation, transforming the American dream into a global aspiration. The U.S. was now boasting the most valuable currency. The world traded on the U.S. dollar, giving the U.S. a diplomatic advantage by allowing it to pressure its adversaries with costly sanctions, limiting their ability to conduct international trade and making disagreement with the U.S. a costly endeavor. The United States was in a good spot, taking hold of its newly gained title as the global superpower. Meanwhile, half a world away, China, scarred by Japanese occupation and its own internal turmoil, faced a pivotal moment. Prior to World War II, the Chinese Civil War was in full swing, a movement which ignited when China's Nationalist Party broke its alliance with the Communist Party in a brutal massacre in 1927. This was then followed by the Nationalist Party's rise to power and purging of the Chinese Communist Party. This conflict now reignited post-World War II. Now in 1947, beyond the Great Wall, the communists suddenly take the initiative. The Civil War ending in 1949 with the Communist Party's ascent to power. The defeated nationalists found refuge in a little island called Taiwan. Under Mao Zedong's rule and the CCP, the People's Republic of China was forged under radical reforms, generating even more hardships for the Chinese people. But China was set for re-emergence, taking the first steps shaping it into the China we see today. The late 20th century witnessed China's transformation under Deng Xiaoping's economic reforms. Embracing market-driven policies, China finally integrated into the world economy, joining the International Monetary Fund, the World Intellectual Property Organization, and the Asian Development Bank, which set the stage for an unprecedented economic boom. For the years of the Mao era, China had a closed-door policy, but now it sought to grow its economy. By the 21st century, as China's economic and military might expanded, its strategic aspiration also grew. It sought to take the next step to becoming a global order by gaining influence on other countries across the world through initiatives like the Belt and Road. This strategy sought to invest in more than 150 countries and international organizations, creating a massive trade route and spreading Chinese influence through its economy and technology. Entering the modern era, China now had a large political influence, military strength, and a rapidly growing economic advantage, giving them momentum to knock at the door of the current global leader, challenging the American-led order. The U.S. took notice of the growing threat posed by the Chinese, and in 2018, under the Trump administration, it took action. The United States, long the vanguard of global technology and once complacent on its military strengths, imposed tariffs on a wide array of Chinese goods, with fear of this new potential global power. This move, more than a mere economic jab, started a trade war. In a tit-for-tat response, China levied its own set of tariffs. This trade war quickly morphed into an era of tensions and sparked the artificial intelligence Cold War and thus began the race to dominate the high-tech industry. China had already established its ambitious Made in 2025 initiative and continued to pursue it with full force, seeking to pivot from a manufacturing giant to a high-tech behemoth, reducing its reliance on foreign technologies, particularly from the US. This plan was not just about economic growth, it was a statement of intent, a declaration of independence from Western tech control. But the U.S. did not stand idly by. The Trump administration's initial salvos, restrictions against tech giants like Huawei and ZTE, were just the beginning. Under President Biden, the strategy has evolved. 
Now executive orders set to be unleashed in 2024 aim to see my US investments in critical Chinese technologies, particularly in AI, semiconductors, and more importantly, quantum information. The US has committed to invest in billions into its domestic high-tech research and production to also deglobalize its high-tech supply chain and prepare for potential long-term conflict. Yet these moves seem to have occurred too late. Under the watchful yet unsuspecting eye of the United States, China quietly ascended the technological ladder, claiming supremacy in many technologies. Yet despite this remarkable rise, the US still maintains one vantage point which has found its way at the center stage of geopolitical tensions between the two countries and the motive for a future war. While China leads in more technologies than the US, mostly all of these technologies rely on one single piece of hardware, semiconductors, the lifeblood of modern technology. These crucial components are largely designed in the US and manufactured in nowhere other than Taiwan and they hold the key to China's technological aspirations. This is the same Taiwan which has hosted historically bad blood with China. This reliance places China in a precarious position, vulnerable to the whims of its historical adversaries, the US and Taiwan. It's a chessboard where past grudges and present ambitions intertwine, setting the stage for a modern day arms race. And here stand the players. China striving to redefine the global order, the United States determined to maintain its long-standing supremacy, and both countries surveying Taiwan, the country holding the key to both of their military and technological prowess. But how did Taiwan find itself here, this small island emerging as a pivotal battleground in the high-stakes game of power and technology? And what happens if war triggers in the Taiwan Strait? Taiwan is perhaps the most sensitive flashpoint between the U.S. and China. Some experts warning that Beijing's use of force to claim what it sees as its rightful territory is drawing closer. Chairman Xi Jinping has made it a priority for Beijing, which hasn't ruled out the use of force, a decision that could cost thousands of lives for China, Taiwan, and America. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, dominates the market in semiconductor production pivotal in everything from consumer electronics to advanced military systems. This dominance extends beyond mere economic might. It places Taiwan at a strategic nexus in the global supply chain. TSMC's innovative business model, which is manufacturing chips designed by others at a fraction of the cost of building them in-house, revolutionized the industry. As a result, many U.S. chip companies transitioned to what is known as a fabulous model where they designed the chips in-house and then hired TSMC to make them, consolidating Taiwan's grip on the global semiconductor manufacturing supply chain. This semiconductor supremacy and Taiwan's strategic location are crucial in the simmering tensions between the US and China. For China, Taiwan represents more than a territorial claim. It's a key to technological autonomy and dominance. For the US, Taiwan is an invaluable ally essential for maintaining its technological advantage under the rising threat of China. From these tensions rise two potential scenarios. One, the U.S. moves chip production domestically before China attacks Taiwan. In this case, the U.S. will assist Taiwan through weapon shipments, but it will not fight a direct war with China. Or two, China attacks Taiwan while Taiwan still remains the largest chip manufacturer in the world. In this scenario, due to its dependence on Taiwan for its compute power, the US is forced into war with China. In either scenario, we see the rise of a new arms race, one that has already begun for quantum computing. But why quantum computing? How does a computer become the centerpiece of an arms race? And what about the dangers of this kind of technology? We see how ChatGPT in its early stages is sort of working through some of those kinks. What kind of problems could be encountered here? 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, like I mentioned, uh, there's some bad news about quantum computers when they get rolled out. So unfortunately, uh, when they uh, come online, uh, they'll be able to break all of the encryption schemes that we use today to, say, protect our emails, um, secure credit card information. While the world's attention is currently focused on semiconductors, or the rising talks of nuclear power, little attention is being paid to a technology that may be the deciding factor in this Indo-Pacific conflict, quantum computing. Semiconductors led to an exponential growth in innovation, from self-driving cars to the Apollo moon landing and guided missiles. However, semiconductors have a physical limitation that restrict how much more computing power can be gained from them, which will eventually lead to a ceiling for technological innovation. Quantum computing works fundamentally differently than normal computers and are much faster than modern computers, which currently rely on semiconductors. A fully functioning quantum computer has the power to initiate another exponential growth in technology, much like the invention of semiconductors brought to the world. Quantum computers allow for incredibly powerful artificial intelligence and poses a heavy risk to national security through its ability to decrypt data encrypted by classical computational methods. Quantum computing is the future weapon of choice for two key reasons. First, the country that gains supremacy in this technology would see a massive boost in its technological capabilities, giving it an edge in economic, military, and social sectors. In a Cold War scenario between the US and China, the country that falls behind in quantum computing would struggle to keep up with all the technological innovations that come with the discovery of a fully functional quantum computer. If the losing country is unable to access the technology due to sanctions, they may consider conceding the Cold War to the winning country to gain access to these technologies. This was similar to how semiconductors played a crucial role in ending the Cold War between the US and Russia. Additionally, quantum computing presents a high risk of being hacked for the losing country, with the ability to decrypt messages and passwords very easily. This means that the country that owns the technology would have a significant advantage in a wartime scenario, being able to access the enemy country's water supply, power grids, and even nuclear weapons. No password will be safe. The second factor making quantum computing a strong contender in the Cummings arms race is its lack of chokehold in its supply chain. Unlike semiconductors, quantum computing is a relatively new technology that is not yet mass manufactured and does not rely on any one region of the world for its production. This gives governments the opportunity to manufacture the technology domestically and avoid supply chain disruptions. In the event of a war over Taiwan, where TSMC's production line gets disrupted, the race for quantum supremacy would continue unaffected, as TSMC does not control the production of quantum computing parts. The future impacts of this technology are widely recognized by governments, and the arms race has already begun. Introducing the IBM Quantum System 2, the world's first modular utility-scale quantum computer system. Quantum System 2 was designed to tackle complex problems that lie far beyond the reach of today's classical supercomputers. It stands 15 feet tall and operates in a near-perfect vacuum at temperatures colder than deep space. Initially powered by three 133 qubit heron processors, Quantum System 2 is fully upgradable to the growing line of utility-scale QPUs that IBM will be releasing over the next five years. This arms race has already begun. Both the US and China have been pouring billions into quantum research, China leading in government funding with a staggering $15.3 billion USD in investment, the United States following with a mere $3.7 billion USD. But despite China's hefty investments, it's American firms that are leading the quantum charge, with IBM currently holding the title of having the most powerful quantum computer in the world. 
But the evidence that this technology has become the centerpiece of this current arms race comes from China's bold claim. China released a highly concerning publication regarding their quantum research. They suggested that with a sufficiently powerful quantum computer, they had come up with an algorithm which could crack the most secure 2048-bit encryptions, the current standard for encryption. Mostly everything from secure communications, critical infrastructure, financial transactions, and confidential data are protected by this kind of encryption. This poses a dire national security threat to the United States and the rest of the world, and has initiated a ticking clock for the gaining the quantum advantage. Under this pressure, the U.S. is pushing for quantum supremacy with the National Quantum Initiative, or NQI. This comprehensive federal program is designed to accelerate quantum research and development with an eye towards bolstering the nation's economic and national security. It's a multifaceted effort encompassing various activities, strategies, and programs aimed at maintaining and enhancing U.S. leadership in quantum information science, or QIS, and its applications. But is this even enough? China is aggressively promoting education and training in advanced technologies as a cornerstone of its national strategy for technological supremacy. It is also reforming and reshaping its educational system to align with this goal. Evident in initiatives like the Education Modernization 2035 Plan and the Implementation Plan for Accelerating Education Modernization. China is committing significant resources, around 4% of its GDP annually, approximately $520 billion, to improve its educational system and indirectly prepare its future workforce to lead in the technologies of the future, like quantum computing. Yet, the NSA is said to be working with the technology, so we might just be seeing the tip of the iceberg for this technology and these innovations. Here we stand, at the start of a new arms race and a potential new world order. Only time will tell. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds I suppose we all thought that 